the studio today, we have a special guest from the VFW 8463. So guys, introduce yourself. Hi, my name is Evo. And this is Chris Maz with the VFW Riders Group. Awesome. So you guys have been around for a while now. So, and uh, tell me, I know that you guys have a few rides that are coming up. We do actually. Well, for one, let's, let's uh, state it that the VFW in Cape Coral is the oldest fraternal organization in Cape Coral. Wow. Right. And we recently, recently, as in three years ago, started the Veterans of Foreign Wars Riders Group. Nice. So now the Riders Group is pretty much catering to the younger generation, you know, and, and what's really cool about it, it's melding the older generation with the younger generation. Wow. Right. So on that topic, that's what we're doing. We, we get together, we go on rides. It is therapy for us. And we, at the same time, get to help our community. Yeah. Right? So we do cool. fundraisers and we do events like the open membership drive that Chris is talking about that we're going to start doing. Thank you, Florida, for allowing us to do that. Wow. And, you know, we're going to talk about more of this when I get the list out. <laughs> yeah, that's great. So we have bike night that's coming up uh, in April. So April the 13th is Cape Bike Night. That is correct. Yeah. Yes, we will be there starting around 1400 hours. That's 2 p.m. Mm -hmm. And we're going to party our butts off, right? Because <laughs> yeah. it's an open, it's Cape Coral shutting down Cape Coral for the bikers, right. which is amazing. And we happen to be off the beaten path, but we're there. Yes. Right next to 47th Terrace. Yes, know. I actually do a little uh, a little Facebook, um, you know, for you guys to say, hey, come out, come out to the VFW 8463. That is correct. Because basically uh, the slow races are on your street now. So it's right next to the Dixie Roadhouse. So They are. And yeah. you know, it brings a lot of folks over so they could see who we are. Right. And it's amazing how many people didn't know we existed there, you know. Wow. So the slow races are helping us. The fact that we are able to sell hamburgers and cheeseburgers yeah. right there by our post. I mean, they can smell it. They come on over and it's a fun time because we get to see people slow race, you know? Yeah. Yeah. There's lots of vendors there. Uh, we had, you know, vendors there the last time and so we did. Yeah. We ended up asking for volunteers. We didn't charge anyone anything. We yeah. wanted, you know, to have a good time and allow vendors to do their thing. Mm -hmm. They're also being recognized. Yeah. You know, so they're getting out there and it's exciting because it's growing. Mm -hmm. You know, and it, eventually we're going to shut down our entire street. Yeah. Yeah. You know, there's another thing that I just promoted. Um, I brought over some baskets for the for the last uh, Veterans in Need. Oh, they, thank that you, you for that. Yes. Yeah. We, we That's our annual fundraiser. Okay. All right. So when we started this, we said, well, we're going to do annual stuff, right? Yeah. And we started it. We pick an organization to help every year. This year was Heart, Hearts and Homes, which is a great organization. They help out homeless veterans all the time. Oh, wow. And they have a warehouse in Fort Myers. So everything we did was for them. Mm -hmm. Fundraising for financially and for actual items, you know. Wow. We have homeless veterans in the Everglades. Uh, they could use tents. They can use sleeping bags, even water filters where they, yeah. you know, pump water out of the... Uh, yeah, they need socks, underwear, yeah. all of that. Yeah, I went through my whole house. Yeah. <laughs> I, I brought about four bags and, uh, you know, I said, you know, because you needed blankets and towels and, you know, so I said, you know, I really mm. want to be able to donate. And so I did that and uh, really felt good in my heart to be able to do that. And uh, so, yeah, definitely the, you guys do so much for the community and it's just amazing. You know, it's amazing to have so many volunteers. You have yeah. to remember the VFW is 100% volunteer based, right? We, right. we get in there, we do what we have to do, but we have a good time too. Yeah. And to see so many people get involved, it's amazing. Like Chris Maz here. Yeah. Right. He organized most of this stuff and right. he's, he's the foot soldier, you know, he gets the, the job done. And then when we want to have fun, he's our road captain. He leads the way. Yeah. <laughs> so what do you think? Where, where's your favorite ride in Southwest Florida? Well, we, we do the, um, Ocala. No, well, excuse me. I've been to Orlando. We have our state event there every year but i think the okeechobee oh yeah i think it's a good, it's run. A good yeah. run right the okeechobee run and yeah. then we're going to start doing the east coast we're going to go all the way across wow yeah yeah so so riders can find you at the vfw 8463 in cape coral they can and we have a website that has all our information okay vfw8463.org okay 
and you you can look at our calendar you can see all the organizations that are within the VFW post and all the events that are happening at the post too not just the motorcycle stuff that we're doing outside yeah that's right. that is really cool I heard you guys actually rode down here this morning is that right we did yeah. we were jamming out to his tune <laughs> this guy's got an amazing sound system oh, you know wow. I heard him like three blocks ago <laughs> that is amazing yeah. that is so cool yeah so you guys typically ride every every Sunday right we we ride every day yeah, you're right. So, and here's the beauty of it. Everyone that's a member of the riders group has the opportunity to start their own ride that day or a, in that week, you yeah. know. So you can get on our group me app. This is how we communicate mm -hmm. and just put out a ride and say, hey, listen, I'd like to go to Naples today and visit that VFW. And whoever wants to tag along, tag along. And whenever you want to peel off, you can. Yeah. You know, it's not it's not mandatory. It's just fun. Yeah. Yeah, and, and I really thank you for your service. I'm actually an old military wife oh, you <laughs> back are. in the day. Yeah, yeah. yeah so, uh, but thank you so much for your service. Uh, what service were you in? Air Force, oh, Combat Air Communications. Force. Wow, yeah. that's amazing. Unfortunately, I, well, fortunately, I can still ride with one leg. <laughs> oh, nice. It's my therapy, but I'm dreading the day, but eventually I'll have to swap over to a trike. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, definitely. House of Trikes and Bikes actually has the best trikes in, in all of Southwest Florida, just so you know. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah, nice. Yeah. Yeah. All you right. definitely have to check out House of Trikes and Bikes when you're ready for that trike. Very nice. Yeah. Thank you for that. And, yeah. you know, the, the thing about House of Trikes, actually, um, every time that, that you guys have an event, I know about it. And I always call House of Trikes and say, hey, Manfred, do you think you can donate a basket? And he's always like, yes. So, now I, I, he knows it's like routine. I go into House of Trikes, I make up a basket and say, thanks, Manfred. So yeah, so definitely House of Trikes and Bikes, say hi to, to the guys when you have a chance. They we'll have a do. great service department as well. We have folks that purchase the trike from there. Yes. So yeah, it's yes. good. And we have folks that, you know, we visit. That's another ride we do just to check out all the Harley Davidson dealerships, you know? Yeah. And the concerts they have and all that. It's a good time. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So have you noticed we're, we're focusing on good times? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> We've definitely. been through the grinder. Yeah. Now we want to go through the good times. Yeah. Oh, that's amazing. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah, so cool. So, what are the rides um, are, are coming up in April, do you think? Well, we're planning on the Okeechobee. I'll let Chris, I'll let our road captain do that one. Yeah, yeah. So, Chris, tell us about your rides, John. Yeah, sure. Uh, VFW, we are, like uh, Evo was saying here, we're definitely open to the public when it comes to going on a ride, joining us, coming in to the bar, just hanging out with us as our guests. We, we invite everybody over. So, don't feel shy in coming over. Even though it's a private club, uh, we definitely welcome the public. That's why we're having all these open houses over the next year. Uh, not to mention also the bike night. And then we also have other runs that we do locally. Uh, every Sunday we have a meeting in the morning. It's our monthly meeting, uh, first Sunday of the month at 10 a.m. Uh, by 11 o'clock, we're done. So if any riders out there just want to go and hang out with some VFW members, some service members, hear their stories, talk with them, maybe help them out with, you know, just some conversation. Uh, it's a great opportunity for the public to, to get involved with their local veterans and come out and meet some people, shake some hands and have a good ride. Maybe go have some lunch somewhere. That's what we generally do. So it's a good opportunity all the way around for the public. Yeah, Chris, you know, I, I've known you over the years and you've been very supportive to the community. Uh, you and your wife, Jamie, just love you guys so much. And uh, yeah, definitely um, been on so many rides with you guys. Uh, what is your favorite favorite ride, do you think? Oh, that's a tough question. But I know once a year, we generally try and make a trip down to the Keys with the VFW riders. And yes. we have public come down on that trip as well. Uh, we rent a little tiny hotel, and then some members stay on base at a very low cost. Uh, but that's a really fun ride to go down and hit all the islands, island by island, hit different stops you might not have seen or maybe never rode down the Keys. Uh, Seven Mile Bridge is probably my favorite uh, run during that, that ride, that long six-hour ride. Uh, but we do break it up. We make it a 10-hour ride, have fun with it. You're riding about an hour, stop, stretch have a beverage, use the restroom, whatever you got to do, and then get back on the road. But um, that seven mile bridge, we do have a video with the VFW Riders Group on YouTube. If you search uh, seven mile bridge, Florida Keys, you'll see the VFW Riders Group in that video. It's only about 15 minutes long, but it's got some good music and some good scenery of motorcycle riding. Wow, that is very cool. Yeah. And, and what's the website again that, that people can uh, go to the VFW to register? Here, I'll give that over to Evo. <laughs> yes, it's VFW 
8463.org. Nice. nice. Yes, and you can find information on there concerning the district. All right, so that's how it works. We have national headquarters in Kansas City, then you have every state department, and then you have the districts, and then you have the post at the post level. So we're District 13, right? So we are actually doing what we can to start other writers groups and other posts because this is how much involvement we're getting for the community, right? right. Here's something I want to put out there because we didn't really ask for anything, but I'll tell you what. The volunteers at our post came together after Ian, yeah, and we had a food distribution right outside our post, and we served over 500 families. Wow! You know, and we we did that thing for an entire month, seven days a week, and it, it couldn't be done with one person, right? Right. So you have 15 people rotating all the time. I mean, that was amazing. Yeah. And that's what we do. So, uh, on that same note, we go and we help veterans understand that they're not by themselves they're not alone sure. we're here for them mm -hmm. right that's the main purpose of the vfw right so all the combat veterans that are coming back this is out to you we're here for you brothers and sisters nice. don't forget that all right just all you have to do is pick up a phone and give us a call and we have veteran service officers that can help you with your va claim we have a chaplain that can help you out there. Yeah. You know, every from all the line officers, we're all involved. And that's the main purpose. You know, the VFW actually lobbies for us in D.C. Wow. And it's unfortunate, but there are po politicians that want to take away our benefits and stuff. Wow. So when the VFW was founded in 1899, it was to do exactly that. Mm -hmm. Let the government know that these veterans... You know, if they're legless or harmless or something wow. or they have traumatic brain injuries or yeah. post-traumatic stress, you know, right. they can't go back to farming. They can't go back to yeah. doing this stuff. So they need to be helped. That's amazing. And that's what the VFW has done. Yeah, the, you know, the VFW really helped me out when my husband passed away in, in 2020. And uh, they, they really did help me out because, you know, he was a veteran and uh, the, the VFW was amazing. So, oh. yeah, I have to say, if you have a chance to definitely visit the VFW 8463 in the yes. Cape. Yes, that happens to be our home. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah, that's what we call it. It's our home. Yeah. Right. And yeah. We, I, well, some of us actually kind of live there because we volunteer <laughs> so much, but yeah. Nice. Nice. Well, we're going to take a short break here. Uh, this is Patty from the Biker Map, and uh, thank you so much for coming out today. Great. Um, we're Hey everybody, welcome back. This is Patty from the Biker Map and we are here in the studio on Podcast Radio US. You can find us actually every Monday on uh, Podcast Radio US and uh, you can actually find us on our Facebook page. So it's uh, the Biker Map Facebook page. We put all the events that everyone has going on. So definitely check out the Biker Map Facebook page. Uh, we love our community and we just wanna put the word out there or where local events are and uh, and how to get there. So. Definitely welcome back, uh, VFW 80, 80, 80, 8463. 8463. Yes. Yeah, I had a hard time <laughs> spitting that out. Yes. So yeah, so uh, I know that you guys have a, a couple more events that you want to discuss. Absolutely, but before we do that, I'd like to say thank you. Yeah. Because I know you helped us get on the biker map, all right? Yeah. So that's helping out too, and I, we appreciate it. I'm oh. gonna pass it over to our road captain. He's got a list of information that's useful to you if you want to join us. Awesome. So you're talking to Evo and Chris from, from the VFW. Awesome. Thanks for having me, uh, Patty, again. Um, just want to go over a couple quick things and, you know, just really let the public know that we are there open to the public. Primarily, I know it is a veterans organization, it is a membership organization, but we love to have our guests. I just want to make that very clear. So if you know somebody there, please come in. Or if you're looking to just join as a member, it's a very easy process and we're more than happy to assist you in that process. Um, one of the things I did want to mention from our bar manager, Dolly Pierce, uh, she did want to let everybody know that the VFW, our motivation is to get our veterans a place to feel at home like family and have a good time. So many of their families are scattered and don't have a lot of support. So we want to do all we can do to give them that comfort. And with doing that, we do have a lot of events that we have that are open to, like I said, our own members, but also, you know, as a guest, you can come in and join a member and sit down and have a conversation with them, have a cheap drink, 
Uh, we do have the cheapest drinks on bike night, by the way. Nice. And we are looking for vendors on bike night. So if anybody out here is a vendor and they're looking for a table at no cost at our location on bike night, the last one of the season, uh, feel free to reach out to us. But other than that, we do have some uh, games. We have dice games. We have karaoke. We have line dancing classes twice a month. Uh, our Boy Scout, our local Boy Scout troop, does breakfast once a month at our VFW. Uh, we also honor the Wolfhound Legacy once a month. Uh, we're part of Team One Mile for their events. So we have bicyclists that ride from our post to the bridge, and it's all police escorted. And we assist them with the riders group on our motorcycles. It's an excellent event to be part of, especially if you're part of the public. You want to come out and do that, all you have to do is sign a waiver. There's no fee for any of these things that we do. Uh, you just simply have to come in and ask. Um, other than that, we do have um, uh, sock hop parties coming up, live entertainment, food, prizes, Mother's Day. We have events. Uh, we do have a kitchen that's going to be taken over recently. Uh, soon. We're, we're going to have a lot of food coming out of that kitchen. So we're really restructuring everything internally to make it better for everybody else. Uh, another big thing that we have coming up, we do have some street events coming up uh, right there off of 11th Place between Dixie Roadhouse off of 47th Terrace and the Circle at Vincennes. Uh, sometime in June, we're going to have our first street event. We're going to have stages, bands, vendors, food, uh, auction items, prizes, and we're going to run into, we're going to run some type of a themed event at least once a month off the VFW, and that's going to be right there off of 11th Place. Uh, like Evo was saying earlier in the the previous part of the conversation, we do have some permission from the city and from the state level where we're going to have some events about 15 a year that are going to be open to the public. So come down and join us. That is so great, Chris. You know, I, I love the the street party. You know, that that is so amazing. Are you you so you guys are going to close off the street? Yeah, yeah. We got permission from the city nice. uh, a couple times a year. It's a very small fee that we're taking care of, and we're going to go ahead and shut it down and have some live music and stages and food everything oh so. wow well if you need some bands let me know yeah, <laughs> i've got a whole lineup of bands and everything too so definitely well you know that that's so cool you know i i love your location actually for the vfw and it's very inviting when you go in there everyone is so nice and uh you know come out and and have have a have a beer with all the guys and everything and do you guys ride out there from uh you know do you guys have breakfast there in the mornings at all uh, generally, we don't uh, participate in a breakfast for anything open to the public, let alone for the members. We really don't do breakfast at that location, um, but we do ride right, you know, right out to locations. So we might meet up there in the morning, go take a ride out and go have breakfast somewhere. We'd like to support, as a riders group, we like to support our local community. So it comes down to the local business owners. We're not trying to keep everything internal. Uh, don't get me wrong. We just put a brand new bar on the outside of the VFW post called Billy's Pub. It's yeah. absolutely amazing. Everybody's dying to get in there when they walk by on 11th place. And we get people that, that come in and, and have a drink. And it's a great opportunity, once again, for them to see the VFW. But that's a new addition we just put onto the uh, post. And a lot of people are very impressed with that. So it might be something for other people to stop in and see. Yeah, yeah. So, Chris, again, thank you for your service as well. Uh, what service were you in? I was in the Marine Corps. Oh, nice. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Was there a certain year that you you were in? Uh, 98 to 2000. It was long enough okay. for me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. Yeah, I was, I was actually um, at Fort Benning, uh, 92 to 97. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. 92 or 90, 96 maybe. Yeah, 96. Yeah. Yeah, so definitely. I, I really appreciate you guys, and I love, uh, you know, I always... I'm, I'm actually always following you guys on Facebook, and now you guys are on TikTok, too. Yep, yep. We're yeah. on quite a couple different platforms. Uh, we do have some media, uh, some people assisting with the media and the advertising and putting it out there on different platforms like TikTok and so forth. Yeah. Uh, another thing, just to mention on the side, something else that's important to check out, we were having a lot of issues with all the veterans groups having rides on the same day. Oh. So if anybody's interested in looking for a ride, we've coordinated between all of the local veterans organizations and law enforcement riding groups onto one site on Facebook called Southwest Florida Benefit Rides. Yes. And you can go onto that Facebook page also and find whatever veteran ride is going on that day. And you're going to see that the rides are not on top of each other where you have four or five events on the same Saturday. Mm -hmm. Instead, we have everything coordinated now so that people go and go out and see different events and participate that way as well. Oh, that's awesome. So uh, you, you talked about the law enforcement. Is that the Punishers? Yeah, that would be the Punishers. They are one of the groups that's a LEMC with it's a writing group as well. Yeah, yeah. Actually, I, I just talked to Len 
I don't know if you know Len, um, and uh, he's part of the Punishers, and uh, they wanted to, to talk about the, uh, the benefit ride that they have for Lakes Park. Do you know about that one? Not too much, no. It's yeah, actually, um, it, they're riding out from uh, Rockstar Harley Davidson, and they're going to Lakes Park because there's a memorial out there, and uh, so they're gonna ride out there and then go back to Harley Davidson. Uh, it's April the 6th, and uh, that's gonna be escorted and, and all that as well. Yeah, and I love the Punisher events. They really put together a, a great event whenever it comes to a run or a charity or any type of benefit event that they do. So I've known those guys for many, many years. Yeah, that's awesome. It, it's so neat that our community actually works together, you know? Uh, it's it's so nice to, to hear that for sure. Yeah, so, um, so we're actually focusing like April, May timeframe. Do you guys have a lot of events that kind of go through the summer? Well, I know we have, um, we do have our event coming up. Leesburg is coming up. I'm sure everybody yeah. knows about that. That's mm -hmm. coming up in April. So uh, we do have a ride with the VFW riders. We have uh, quite a few individuals that are riding up there together uh, to take back roads the whole way. We're not taking nice. 75. Mm -hmm. So we're going to take a long way around and really take the back roads to get to Leesburg. So that's going to be really our next big run. Then we have Okeechobee after that in about June. Oh, nice. So, yeah, and that's a run we take out to Okeechobee. We stay overnight for a night or two and then roll back. But like I said, these are all open to the public. All you have to do is come on out and show up. Yeah, you know, I'm going to have to hook up to your calendar for sure because, well, you know, I, I know from, you know, um, KSU, you know, the Facebook page there as well and uh, the, uh, the Facebook page that you have for the riders too. Um, so I'm, I'm always current, but I want to know because I'm going to set up a couple bike nights with, uh, do you remember Chris uh, from The Standard? Yep, yep. We're actually having our bike night this Saturday. So Saturday night, March the 23rd, we have Bad Latitude at the Standard. Broadway will be closed down. And then uh, Dean Street as well. So all the vendors will be on Dean Street. We have Calissa River Band playing at the hideaway with all the vendors. And then all the bike parking is on Broadway. So he actually loves to do the, the bike nights. Um, we usually do them like two or three times during the season. And then in the summertime, we're going to try to hit a couple of the uh, bike nights at Page Field. Oh, nice. So remember, yeah. we used to do mm -hmm. Page Field as well. So yeah, we're gonna try to, to do a couple bike nights there so you guys can come out and have a tent if you want it to as well. So yeah, we'll, we'll keep you current on that. Yeah, and I'll definitely be there for this Saturday coming up for the bike night. Nice. So, one Sunday. second, I lost audio, I'm sorry. No, it's okay. You kicked it. Uh oh I did not. No. <laughs> yeah, it, was, it was you, bro. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, now I have to, so I don't yeah. become a liar. <laughs> Oh, you can stop I didn't and start know. It again. So bike night downtown. We'll see you all there. We have two bands and uh, two streets clo closed down. So Broadway will be for all the bike parking. And then the hideaway bar uh, will be for all the vendors. So two streets, two, two bands. Uh, Bad Latitude will be on Broadway. Mm -hmm. And um, Coosa River Band will be on uh, Dean Street. And that's actually a great opportunity for the public to come out and see the bike nights in downtown Fort Myers. Just uh, a little bit of history on that, just to be very brief. But uh, a couple of years ago, when we had COVID, the River District Association decided that they yeah. didn't want the bike nights anymore. So uh, myself and a couple other people ended up going and doing the unofficial bike nights in downtown Fort Myers and Cape Coral to keep it going, show the city uh, really that you know the public wants to support this event. They don't want to get rid of it. So that being said, with Chris and the owner of Hideaway, Brian, uh, coming together and doing this bike night, without the city doing it or the river district association doing it it's a great opportunity for them to you know bring people down there the the, the store owners down there really lost quite a bit of money when it came to losing that bike night yeah and speaking with a couple of the store owners down there, the jewelry store owners the antique stores they were telling me that in those three or four nights a year they would make all the revenue they needed in order to stay open every yeah. other day uh, open for them was just bonus uh, income so these bike nights really do have a huge impact when it comes to those small business owners in downtown Fort Myers. And it also just brings out uh, the admiration for motorcycle riding and whether you have a family and kids and a stroller and they want to just check out the bikes or, you know, you're an enthusiast and you have your own motorcycle and you want to see some ideas of other people's or show off yours, whatever it may be. It's just a great opportunity. So let's not let the Fort Myers bike night die. Let's keep going and working with the standard and the hideaway and keep this moving forward for everybody to enjoy. Yeah, definitely. You know, it, it's so funny because I don't know if y'all saw downtown for St. Patrick's Day. We actually. Okay? Oh. No. Oh, 
I, I didn't get the, a chance to see it because we were rocking out at our post, you know. <laughs> but we wanted to go. At the same time, I'd say about mm, 5 p.m., many of us couldn't go anywhere. Oh, nice. <laughs> so we had a great time. We even had corned beef and we had the auxiliary kick in in the kitchen, you know, and they, they volunteered to cook for us. Oh, so that's we had wonderful. a great time. But please proceed with the uh, Fort Myers. Yeah, well, I just thought it was so funny because they banned bike night for downtown. I did and not know. Yeah, they, they yeah. said, we're not going to do it. As soon as COVID hit, they gave them the reason to shut it down. And, uh, you know, the, the hotel there, they didn't want to have that kind of riffraff, to be honest. And, you know, I mean, I was like, okay, you know, but, you know, things, things, things change, you know, maybe they're just new or whatever. But the whole thing was, is that you have to see how many Irishmen were down there for St. Patrick's Day. It was a sea of green, the whole streets, all the streets. So I'm thinking to myself, huh? What's better, um, you know, bikers or, you know, <laughs> drunken, leprechaun. drunken leprechauns, you know? <laughs> so a whole bunch of drunk Irishmen down there. So yeah. I don't I don't understand the difference, but, you know, maybe Luminary changed your mind because Luminary has been great. You know, it, it's, it brings uh, so much revenue to, you know, downtown as well. And uh, it, like I said, you know, our purpose here, and that's why I love the biker community, is our purpose here is, is to all work together. Yeah, and I'll say, you know, every time we did those bike nights, unofficial bike nights in downtown Cape Coral and downtown Fort Myers, um, speaking with the police officers that were there to assist with security on the event, uh, every time, every event that we spoke with them, they always enjoyed that event yeah. because there was no issues or right. riffraff. I know it's, uh, you know, a lot of people get that, that different idea of a biker, but most of the bikers that you're seeing, these guys are lawyers, doctors. Right. They're riding motorcycles that are forty, fifty thousand dollars for sure. a motorcycle. Right. That's their weekend project. So uh, don't let the uh, the facade, you know, <laughs> dissuade you in any way. Uh, go down there and, and just have a good time down in, at the Fort Myers bike night. I'm sure you'll appreciate it. And these guys are out there, and ladies out there, these riders, they're out there to have a good time. They want to enjoy. They want to meet other people and have company and and just move on and and show other people and give the charity. A lot of these bikers, and we see it all the time. Right. You'll see it on 41. You'll see 60, 70 bikes going down 41. You might be stopped at the light. If there's 40 or 50 bikes riding in a row, the reason why is they're probably on a charity event or a benefit event. They don't just do that just to inconvenience people for traffic. So keep that in mind and keep an eye out for the motorcyclists. You know, you always have to keep an eye out for them, especially down here in Florida where we ride 12 months a year. That is amazing. Thank you so much for saying that, Chris. You know, we, we so appreciate you guys. And uh, Evo, do you have something to put, say about that? Yes, absolutely. Our safety is key. Our yeah. safety is key. I've seen too many accidents and I don't want to see any more. And it's neglect. It is irresponsible people that are texting and distracting themselves. They're not even like distra being distracted from something else. They're doing it themselves and they are wiping motorcyclists out. Mm -hmm. And it's not good. And we, I mean, watch the news, you'll see people on the news all the time. Yeah. And it was something that could have been prevented. Right. And that's how simple it is. Yeah. Pay attention, folks. Pay attention. Look at your blind spots. Don't assume that nothing is there. Check your blind spots. And the ironic part is, you know, the person that you might get into that auto accident with, that motorcyclist is going to have less of a chance of walking away from it than the person in the vehicle. That person on the motorcycle, you might even know them. They might be your neighbor, your friend, or you know, a relative, or a friend's relative, or a coworker's relative. So just keep that in mind. I mean, these people aren't out here. We're no motorcyclists is out there to cause ruckus. And if they are, the cops are out there looking for them. They're going to pull them over. So let the cops worry about that. But just keep your eyes open and just watch for motorcycles. That's what our all our bumper stickers say. So. <laughs> Yeah, well, we so appreciate you guys coming out today. And, um, you know, thanks for riding down here. Is there anything else that you'd like to, to tell everybody? Stop down and have a drink. Yeah, <laughs> come on down. Come on over. Be our guest. You know, I did want to touch a little bit on how to become a member. Yes. Because that's the ultimate goal, right? So you can support. And it's a bigger story than that. But for all the combat veterans, if you had boots on ground, so if you have an expeditionary medal or a ribbon, you have a combat badge or a combat ribbon. If you have hostile fire pay on your 
leave an earnings statement or an imminent danger pay, all that is provable, you can become a member of the VFW. To, so, yes, and our post is offering your first year free, right? right? So you have the opportunity to become a life member if you so choose to, right? But as of now, we'll, we will pay for your first year. So come on over. And now we also have what well, a little explanation, auxiliary, right? We have our auxiliary. They rock. They make everything happen for us. They are the support, right? So in combat, you have your team that's boots on ground facing the enemy, right? And the auxiliary is technically the, the team that goes and gives the ammo. And, right. and so we've named them the auxiliary. They're, we're not in combat anymore, but I'm just saying that's who they are. They support us. And to become an auxiliary member, you have to have a family member such as a grandparent, a parent, uh, I believe a sibling, or a sibling and children. So either or, you can qualify and you can honor them by becoming a member. Yeah, so basically I, I would be able to come become a member because, well, my husband passed, but um, basically I was a military wife. Yes, all you have to do, if you don't have it already, just bring a DD-214, yep, which is the Department of Defense form, uh, showing folks that they were discharged from the military, right. and it lists their schooling and their ribbons, you know, the date they came in, they separated, so that, that okay. information is necessary to become a member. Okay, yeah, I was old army, so definitely, yeah, right I'm, I'm going to come join. Yeah. And even if you don't have a DD-214 readily available, there is a National Archive record request that you can move forward with, and it's at no cost. Uh, so if a family member wants to join the VFW and they don't have that 214 or, you know, their husband or grandfather or whatever, you know, deceased for a number of years, they don't have the paperwork, through that archive request, we can get that 214 at no cost to them, and then they can go ahead and move forward with joining the VFW and helping other veterans and just honoring the legacy that their family already created. Oh, that's amazing. So tell us your address again of where to go. We are located at 4709 Southeast 11th Place, Cape Coral, Florida, 33904. That's amazing. And the website? It's VFWF, excuse me, <laughs> correcting, <laughs> correcting. <laughs> VFW8463.org, nice. .org, right? Um, and you can find our information there. We do have a landline, which is the, the number. It's uh, the area code is two three nine, and then it's five four two eight four six three. Oh, that's amazing! Yeah, yeah the, you know our our podcast is actually going to go everywhere around the world and everything. And there's a lot of people that come to this area and they just don't know where to go. You know, uh, they come down here with their motorcycles, buy a house. And they don't know where to go. So that's what we want to do here at the Biker Map. Yeah, well, there's also another option for that. You have a KSU Cape Coral on yes. Facebook. And you can definitely check that out. And if you meet with the KSU Cape Coral crew, they are directly involved with the VFW riders as well. So there's a lot of members that are of both organizations. And we just like to, once again, get out and ride. So whether it's VFW riders, KSU, Cape Coral, whatever it may be, the easiest way, I think, for most people to find it is probably Facebook. Yeah. Come join our group. We'll let you in and you can see what we're doing and come out and join us for a drink or a ride. Get some, yeah, so get some wind time. When is that ride again for the for the Keys? Uh, the Keys ride is generally in June. In June. Yeah, it's about the first week of June. Last couple of years we went there and we were riding down celebrating Evo's birthday. So nice. I got some video if you ever take a look at that <laughs> uh -oh. YouTube video with the Seven Mile Bridge. Take a look on that. At the very end, there's a little uh, Easter egg in there with Evo and Irish Kevin from Kevin's. <laughs> oh, very good. I'll have to share that one for sure. Yeah. That's awesome. I'm gonna look Once again, one. good times. <laughs> That's so funny. Yeah, but you know, if you don't mind, I'd like to speak on, yeah. on other things. Uh, sure. Reality check, okay? Sure. These organizations are congressionally recognized. The VFW, the American Legion, the AMBETS, right? The, the Disabled American Vets, the Purple Heart, you know, so it, it's going to take the younger generation to step up. Right. The younger generation has to come in. We don't reality check. We don't live forever, right? So yeah. our World War II vets are slowly going, right? And yeah. then as you move on, the Korean War vets, the Vietnam War vets, you know, we have uh, the Gulf War vets. It, it's time for the younger guys to come in. Sure. Now, I understand there are many organizations that don't cater 
to younger vets with their families. But it, it, it's nothing, well, it's, it's not nothing. It does take energy, time and energy. But you can make a post by helping and put it, bringing in ideas and, and doing such things that you can change it sure. so that you can, you know, accommodate for families and stuff, mm -hmm. which is what we're doing. Right. And it took, it took all these generations to get together and make it happen. Right. And that's what we're doing, you know, and I, I want to enlighten everyone. The last one we had was the global war on terrorism. Mm -hmm. Right. There's an expeditionary medal for that. That means it, if since 2001, we have over 20 years of veterans that would qualify for the VFW and we're not seeing them. Wow. And I'm thinking to myself, well, what's going on? Well, it's probably because they don't have a clue of what's going on with the VFW. They don't understand that it's all these older veterans that got together with these organizations and made changes at, at the dc level right sure. at, at the cat on capitol hill it's all good stuff especially if you are the veteran right, right. you you said your husband had passed away yeah. right you were assisted mm -hmm. imagine not having any assistance right you know and that's what the vfw has been fighting for since day one yeah. 1899 yeah it was actually vfw um, um post 90 that helped me out post 90 Oh, nice. See, yeah. there's so many posts. I don't know. Right. Like yeah. there, there's so many posts. Example, there's one right down the street here. We call it the Fort Myers Beach Post. Oh, right. Okay. We have one on Pondella, which is North Fort Myers. Yeah. We have one in Lehigh. We have one in LaBelle. And that's just District 13. Wow. So all these different districts, you know, come on by and check it out. Yeah. And like Chris was saying, we just added Billy's Pub. Billy was one of our commanders, previous commander. I'm a past commander myself. Okay. And Billy, unfortunately, passed away from COVID complications. But he had a vision, right? And his vision was to accommodate. So move all the smoking from indoors to outdoors. Sure. And at the same time, enjoy your tropical paradise, right? Right. So the Tiki Hut was officially named Billy's Pub in honor of Billy Brennan. Oh. Right. Our past commander. And it's an amazing place. And we... We are a canteen, that's military talk for bar, right? right? <laughs> and we sell cigars, we have every drink known, you know, so, but that's not the only thing we do. As you, we had mentioned before, we do many other things. Right, yeah. Right. Yeah, do you know my buddy uh, Jeff Schott from uh, Mobile Cigars? Oh, yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah, he came and did the, the last bike night, um, and he, he'll actually be there uh, at the VFW, too. Uh, he has Mobile Cigars. And he sets up a tent at the VFW for bike nights. Yeah, and you know what? His pricing was amazing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because I'll, I'll tell you what. We at the VFW, we don't gouge our vets and our members, right? right? So the same cigars we sell are like down the street, 12 to $15. We sell them for 5 bucks. Very They're the cool. same cigars, you know? So yeah. we, we take care of our members. But this guy came around, and he had like a huge selection. Yeah. And I'm thinking to myself, wow, he volunteered to be a vendor. Right. He brought cigars. I had to go over there and buy many of them myself. You oh, know, it was that's amazing. Great. But that I'm just saying a collective. It was all these folks doing stuff. Yeah, he was amazing because I, I asked him, you know, my, my boyfriend, I told him that I had a, a new vendor, you know, for cigars. And he gave me specific instructions of what he wanted to. So I surprised him for his birthday and found the cigar. You know, he's like, oh, you know, she's she's not gonna find it, you know. And it, it was like a dual blend from uh, Connecticut. I don't know. You know, I, I smoke a cigar once in a while, but not really. But uh, he was amazed. He's like, where did you get this from? I'm like, Jeff shot it, shot mobile cigars, you know. So they're in the biker map as well. And they like to do our bike nights. But uh, I know, Chris, did, have you uh, bought a cigar from him? Oh, yeah, no. Once in a while, I'll enjoy a cigar. Well, a couple times a year. Yeah. We just recently got engaged, so I bought some Cubans when we were out of the country. But, yes. You know, <laughs> other than that, but regarding, thank you, and regarding uh, cigars and, and like what we're talking about, the post, like we said, we have our, the vendor that, you know, is there for bike night. He's got an amazing selection, great prices. We also have our own cigars at the post. And just so everybody knows, our post for many years was smoking inside. Now we have no smoking inside our facility. So those people who left and they were, you know, upset with the smoking inside, come on back. We've got no smoking inside. Billy's nice. Pub is all outside. That's your smoking area. 
So you can come enjoy some clean AC and some cheap drinks and some good food. Uh, so just keep that in mind too. So don't shy away from us too much. Yeah, so we have to go and close out for our uh, next segment, but uh, is there anything else that you'd like to tell us about the VFW 8463? Well, we pretty much said the website. You can find it all there. You know, we're only a phone call away. And if you know of a veteran that is needing assistance, please, it is your responsibility as a citizen of our country to actually say something about it and help. All right, don't, don't, Take it for granted that, okay, this guy went out there and fought for my freedom, and when he gets back, or he, she gets back, yeah. now, like, okay, no big deal. Thanks, pal. No, it, it, it doesn't end. If we need help. We need camaraderie, right? That's a brotherhood, sisterhood. Yes. And we definitely need our government to not forget us, yeah. right? So, please, if you're a person that knows of someone talk to them or something, call the VA or, or get, get them assistance. You know, that's how we found out we had homeless veterans in the, in the uh, Everglades. Yeah. Now, pay in mind, there are some veterans that choose not to assimilate back into society. <laughs> yeah. And then maybe it's for a very good reason, but they still need assistance. They can't just live out there, you know, <laughs> buck naked and trying to eat pythons or whatever, sure. you know? Right. All right. Yeah, thank you so much. That's so important to our community. Yeah, and in addition to, even if you're not a member of, our, of any of the local VFWs and you are a veteran and you're in need of assistance, we have numerous programs that are right there in-house at the VFWs. We have a veterans relief program. We've had people where we had a husband, wife, and two kids that their house burnt down and they're waiting for uh, insurance money to come back so that they could uh, you know, start rebuilding their lives. And it was an unfortunate situation. They were stuck financially. And there's different opportunities that we have at the VFW Post where somebody who is qualified, who is a veteran, can come in, even if they're not a member, and still get that assistance they need. So it's not too much. Just all you have to do is make a phone call or come out in person just and ask a couple questions. And most likely the help that you need is right there underneath your, your nose. So feel free to reach out to the VFW in that aspect as well. Wow, that is so heart-filled. I just thank you guys for coming out today, for sure. Thank you for having us. Yeah, yeah. Evo and Chris, thank you so much. Yep. Thank you, Patty. Appreciate it. Yeah. And now we, we kick stands up. Kick stands up. <laughs> Rock out and let the pipes roar. Yeah, you guys ride safe. I hope you have a safe trip back, and we will definitely see you uh, for bike night, uh, April the 13th. We'll see you at bike night. We'll see you then. Thank you. Okay. Awesome. Thanks, Patty. Thank you. Are you ready to ride? Then get to Von Baron Motorcycles, your premier destination for certified pre-owned sport bikes, cruisers, adventure bikes, and more. Your dealer for Buell, Freedom, and Buscadero Motorcycles, plus certified pre-owned cars and trucks. Ride today. We finance. Von Baron also offers full-service repair and customization, fully licensed and insured. In Fort Myers off of Eagle Road at 16770 Link Court. Call 239-400-1289. No matter what you ride, Von Baron has got you. VonBaronMotorcycles.com It's always a good time at the Deck Bar in Cape Coral. Full breakfast menu Tuesday through Sunday, 7 to 11 a.m. Mondays, all day happy hour, noon to late, with karaoke 2 to 6. Enjoy the best wings in the Cape, just 75 cents during Wing Wednesday. Bike and Auto Night is the first and third Thursday of every month from 7 to 11 p.m. And see the live music schedule at thedeckbar.com. The Deck Bar, 4707 Southeast 15th Avenue, the Cape's five-star dive bar. The House of Trikes and Bikes, delivering the best motorsports vehicles for 20 years. The House of Trikes and Bikes, the largest trike dealer in Florida, an official dealer of Ravaco Trikes, plus featuring a state-of-the-art service center, serving all metrics, Harley-Davidson, ATVs, Royal Enfield, Aprilia, Moto Guzzi, and CF Moto, with two decades of trike conversion experience. Find your ride at the House of Trikes and Bikes, new, pre-owned, and rentals at 4607 Fowler Street, Fort Myers, or houseoftriksandbikes.com. Make life a ride at Gulf Coast Motorcycles. Known for top quality bikes, Gulf Coast Motorcycles is a full service motor rad dealer. And check out their selection of Ducati. Whether new or pre owned, Gulf Coast Motorcycles has the bike for you with financing options, including 0% for 36 months on select models. Located at 17080 South Tamiami Trail, Fort Myers. Or visit gcmotorcycles.com. Live, play, ride with 
Gulf Coast Motorcycle. Rev up your ride with Verdow Motorcycles and Four Buyers. Verdow is the longest established custom shop in Lee County. Whether you need a tune-up to keep your bike running smoothly or a complete overhaul to take your ride to the next level, Verdow Motorcycles has got you covered. Specializing in Harley-Davidson, experience the difference for yourself at Verdow Motorcycles, 2531 Catherine Street, or call 239-332-1477. Custom creations, legendary rides for Dow Motorcycles. If you're in the market for your new home but want a better rate, then call Golfside Elite Realty. Let the Golfside girls help you navigate the high rates and find you a better deal. Serving Southwest Florida from Naples to Port Charlotte. Specializing in new construction homes, golf communities, Babcock Ranch, and Cape Harbor. Your Florida dream home awaits with Golfside Elite Realty. Call 239-443-8642 or visit GolfsideEliteRealtyLLC.com. Thanks for riding with the Biker Map Podcast, the place where you can hear about events, live music, and the best happy hour in Southwest Florida. Get more at thebikermap.com.